All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to take a look at central angles. Um, and we are going to just start doing some angles with circles. We're going to look at some central angles today. Um, and then we'll look at some other ones down the road. So let's just start with central angles. So a central angle is an angle in the center of the circle. And um, it has the same measure as the arc. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. So there's, there's two things to be paying attention to here. The first one is the angle. So I see this angle here, um, you know, I'll, I'll call this point D here. Notice that D is the center of the circle, and so that angle is a central angle. Now, there is a thing called a arc measure. Now, arc measures are uh, the number of degrees that we've covered in a circle. Now, a circle has 360 degrees, Right, so the central angle has the same number of degrees as the arc measure does. Now, the way we would talk about that is we would say the measure, so we do an, a, an M of A, B, and we put a little arc over top. So remember with segments, if I was talking about like segment AB, I'd put a little line across the top. In this case, I'm doing an arc AB, so I'm gonna put a little arc over the top. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for some arc measures. Uh, so let's take a look at FG, let's start there. So notice FG, it's always gonna be, if I'm using two letters, it's gonna be the shortest distance. So F to G, that distance right there. Uh, notice uh, E's here at the center of my circle. Uh, I don't have this angle right here, but what I do have is 135 here. And so there's two things to remember. One, I should remember that if two angles are next to each other uh, and they add up to be a straight line, that's a linear pair. That means they are supplementary. They add up to 180. Um, or you could also think of it this way, that from D to G is half of the circle. And I can think about that as being 180. So if I want to solve for FG, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 180 minus 135, and I get 45 degrees. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at FGD, and let's go ahead and fill that 45 degrees in here. So FGD, notice that's starting here, and I'm going now the whole way around. So don't get that confused with an angle. Sometimes we think of FGD and we're thinking, oh, like angle FGD, but that, there's no angle there, okay? Notice we have the arc over top, so we gotta stay along the circle. I'm not going down the lines or anything like that. So I'm staying along the circle here. And what do I know about G to D? Well, I know that's 180. And so actually what I can do here is I can say, okay, I know this piece right here is 180. I know this piece right here is 45. Sorry, that should be a five there, 45. I'm gonna add them up and I get 225. All right, let's take a look at another example or two. All right, so let's look at arc IJ. So again, notice L is at the center of my circle, so these are all central angles. I know that this is 90 degrees here, so this one over here is also going to be 90 because it needs to add up to 180. So that one right there is 90 degrees. All right, HLK, so HLK, notice in this case, I've got from H to L to K. Notice that this one has the angle sign next to it. So when I'm looking for an angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look at this actual angle in here rather than the arc, okay? So I'm not doing an arc HLK where I need to stay on the circle, I actually look for the angle. So in this case, remember it's the middle letter we're looking for when we're dealing with angles. And so that is going to be 180 minus 35, very similar to what we did in the last problem. So I get 145 there. All right, IHK. IHK, notice what we're doing here. We've got I to H all the way to K. And I know I've got a 90 here. I've got a 145 here. So if I add those up, I get 235. Hopefully you're getting the hang of some of these. Uh, let's look at, let's see, I think we got two more. We got this one and then one more and we will wrap this up. So look at this case. Okay, this is a new thing we've got going on here. I've got, um, I've got 55 degrees here for that angle on the left at the top. And then they're asking me for N to O. Well, notice I've got these curved marks here. What do those mean? Those 
mean they're the same size. If I've got one mark in one angle, one mark in the other angle, that means they are the same size. So this would be 55 as well. Sorry, that's a rough looking 55. Let me just see if I can get it looking a little better. That's a little better. Okay, so I know this guy's 55 and that's the same as the central angle. MO is the next one. Notice it's a minor arc, so we don't need to include the letter N. Just so long that it's less than 180 degrees, we can use two letters. So MO is going to be 55 plus 55, which is 110. And then POM. So POM is going to go the whole way around like this. Now there's a couple ways to think about this. We could solve for P to O if we wanted to. I don't really want to. Okay. I actually kind of want to go from P to N and say that's half the circle, that's 180, and then add 55. So I'm going to do 180, half the circle, plus that 55 angle, and we will get to 35. All right, let's take a look at one last problem here. So there's one or two things I want to show you here um, that you might run into. All right, so this first one, VU. We want to solve for VU. So what I would think about, again, you want to think about whole circles, half circles, and quarter circles a lot of times. Notice that VU makes up 90 degrees with this RV section. And I know RV is 65, okay? So what I'm going to do to do VU is I'm going to say, okay, 90 minus 65. Now, if you're not really sure um, about all that, what you could do is think about SV and find that and then subtract from 180. You could also do it that way as well. But in this case, if I know that that's 90, uh, it's a quarter of a circle, I can subtract from 90. Up next, they ask for ST. Now, how would I solve for ST? Let me show you a trick. Now, we're going to go back all the way to congruent triangles. Remember in congruent triangles, we had something called vertical angles. They're angles made up of two lines, and they kind of make like a V, okay? Notice in this case, look what happens. This angle right here and that angle right there are made up by the same two lines. Those are vertical angles. And what do we know about vertical angles? We know vertical angles are congruent. So that one is going to also equal 25. All right, last bit here. I'm going U to T all the way to V. I've got to get this whole thing, okay? I know we've picked up some other letters along the way, but that's okay. So we're going basically this whole section from here all the way to here. All right, let me show you the really sneaky way to do this, okay? If I know that UV is 25 degrees and I know the whole circle is 360 degrees, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do 360 minus 25. Whatever's left over has got to be all those degrees. So I get 335. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple examples so that way we could see how central angles work, use the vertical angles, uh, use complementary, supplementary. We're using kind of our whole bag of tricks here for solving for angles. But really, you want to think about what do I know? I know, you know, whole circle is 360, half a circle is 180, and then a quarter of a circle is 90. I also know vertical angles are congruent. If I know those things, I should be able to apply them and solve for all the different angle measures in your assignment. So hopefully this is helpful um, as a review for solving for arc measures with central angles.